Hi, my name is Amy Guest from EatingHealthySpendingLess.com. Today I'm going to share with you how I make my bone broth and it tastes very good. I know that there are a lot of different bone broth products in the store and I hear all the time how gross they taste. Well, I promise you that if you try this recipe, you are going to be amazed at how delicious it really is. It's more of a chicken broth flavor than a bone broth. So bone broth is typically lots of bones with very few vegetables and you get a very foul flavor is the only way I can really <laughs> describe it. Uh, and I do keep it on hand for like emergency purposes or if I'm traveling, but my homemade bone broth is my absolute favorite and the secret is adding vegetables to it to give it a lot of good hearty flavor like you would get in a bowl of chicken noodle soup. So let's get started. The first thing that I do is I prep my vegetables. Now I make this every single week. I drink about two to three cups of bone broth a day. So what I would tell my viewers is, you know, um, use your veggie scraps. Start saving your veggie scraps, put them in a Ziploc bag and store them in the freezer so that when you make your bone broth, you have veggie scraps to use. It's a zero food waste method and it provides lots of great flavor. However, if you are making this every single week, it's really hard to accumulate a lot of veggie scraps in your freezer every single week. So this is my go-to recipe and because right now I have no veggie scraps in my freezer. Um, but even if I do, I still make sure I have onion, celery, and carrots. Those are the three key ingredients that will make your bone broth taste amazing. Okay, so let's get started. I have just here three celery stalks, three carrots, so just remember three. And you don't need to cut off the ends at all. I just cut them into thirds and put them in. There's nothing in here, it's just my celery. And I'm going to do the same thing, except I don't like this slimy part of the carrot, so I just cut it off but I leave the rest on. And again, I cut it into thirds, put it in. That's a big carrot. <laughs> okay, well that was easy. Now we're not going to use a whole onion. I often tell um, people that they only need to use half of an onion in recipes. And the reasoning for that is so that you don't always are using a lot of an ingredient. Use as little as possible to get a maximum amount of flavor. So half of an onion, leaving the skin on, throw it in. You can rinse the skin and that way it gets off any dirt, um, but that's what I do. I'll save this for another day. Okay, so also I like to take a head of garlic and I'm sure you've noticed there are really big cloves of garlic and then there are really tiny cloves of garlic. I don't care to cut all of the little tiny ones when I'm in the kitchen cooking. I just want a big chunky garlic clove when I'm sauteing something uh, for dinner. And so what I like to do is take all of these little tiny garlic cloves, as you can see they're really tiny and I like to put them in my bone broth. So I'll just take a little bunch and I like to cut them in half, like so, leaving the skin on and put them right in. Sorry, that onion is strong. Okay, next, these are my chicken bones. I cooked this whole chicken last weekend and I took off as much meat as I could and I saved the bones. And I'm just going to pop these in. I leave on as much skin as I can because that also is going to give great flavor. And then I just have some more bones from another night. There we go. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. This is going to extract all of the minerals and vitamins from the bones, making this super nutritious. And last but not least, before we add the water, I like to add one tablespoon of salt. And I know that that might sound like a lot, but we're going to be making a lot of 
broth. And so this gives good flavor to the broth without adding too much sodium. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up with water. And I fill it all the way up to the max line, and that is about 15 to 16 cups. So you're going to get a lot of really good rich bone broth. So hold on just a second. Okay, it's filled up. I just used my filtered water, and now I'm going to put the lid on. Now you wanna cook this as long as you possibly can, and we're going to cook this for 120 minutes, but I would do at least an hour. So make sure that your valve is on sealing, and I do put it on manual, and I go all the way up to 120 minutes. And as soon as it's done, I'll show you what it looks like and I'll show you also how I store it. Welcome back. It's been about two and a half hours and the bone broth is done. Now I just turned the valve from sealing to venting and all of the steam came out. What I normally do is I normally do this either in the morning or in the evening where it can naturally release overnight or naturally release during the day when I'm gone. And so just keep that in mind as well that this stays hot for at least 10 hours after it's done cooking. And so you can leave it and forget about it all day if you want to. Anyways, let me show you what it looks like. If I can get this off. <laughs> I, I'm doing this all backwards, there we go, to show you. Go. Let me get a towel. I got some steam on my hand. It smells amazing in here. Um, let me see if I can show you. That's what it looks like. We're using whoops if I were you are seeing my banana and my bread <laughs> if I were using beef bones I wouldn't necessarily have to strain it even though I do prefer to strain all of my broth I wouldn't have to because the bones stay intact when you put a whole chicken bone in here it just all kind of disintegrates into like little tiny bone fragments you don't want to drink that that's not going to heal your gut, that's just going to cause more damage to your gut. So I strain it, and this is just paper towels. You can use cheesecloth, but I don't even know the last time I bought cheesecloth, and so I always just use uh, two layers of paper towels in a strainer, and then I just take a soup spoon, and I just start ladling it through the paper towel strainer. like so um, but like I was saying if you did beef bones uh, you could actually strain out all the broth and then do it again so you're getting two uh, sets of bone broth from one set of bones which is phenomenal with chicken bones I wouldn't do that because the bone fragments are so small, it's just broken down way too much, and then I would throw them away. So, I wanted to show you though how I store my bone broth. I think that's really important. This is like a bone broth sauna. <laughs> Normally, like I said, I let this totally cool down um, before I do this, but for video purposes, we're doing it the fast way. So let me just pull this off real quick. And they, I can see bone fragments in my paper towel right now. So what I wanna show you though, is how beautiful the color is. And what I do is I just take these jars. I drink two cups in the morning, and then sometimes I drink one cup in the afternoon. So I like to put 16 ounces in these jars, and then I'll do an eight ounce jar, and then this is my day two cups in the morning, one cup in the afternoon. 
Of course, sometimes I use these really large 18 ounce jars as well. I like this. This is for making jelly or canning. And so I just put this on top, prevent spilling. Can you see? There we go. And then I just ladle the broth in. And I leave enough so that when I freeze it, um, there's room for it to expand. Okay, so I just take these jars, they are piping hot, and I need to let them sit at, until they reach room temperature. And then I like these plastic lids, I got them on Amazon, and I just like them because I don't have to mess with a, a metal lid and then something to tighten it. I like these. These are not waterproof, so if you tip your jar side to side, the liquid will come out. But for just freezing purposes and drinking this broth at home, I love these. But you can buy silicone little strips to go inside of here that help prevent um, that from happening. So that is how I make the bone broth. Once this comes down to room temperature, it's safe to put it in the freezer. If it's still warm and you put it in the freezer, the glass jar will crack. So if, if you're worried about it, stick these in the refrigerator and let them cool overnight and then you can put them in the freezer and they'll last six months or beyond. I typically go through a whole batch in one week. So <laughs> anyways, I hope that that helps you. I hope that you enjoy this video on how to make bone broth and I hope that you'll get in the kitchen and make some for yourself. Have a great day. Bye-bye.